What's up guys, this is Krishna here. Welcome to another exciting tutorial series. We're gonna be doing explosion with trails in Houdini. This is the hardest tutorial series I have done to date and there's a lot of content to cover. Best of all, this is a completely free tutorial. However, I will leave a link in the description to download project files. Please support me by purchasing them. There will be a total of 11 files. All are Houdini files, but one. Eight HIF files are individual parts from this tutorial. One bonus high quality final version tutorial HIP file. One original HIP file from the teaser video. One original After Effects file. In this tutorial, we will cover main explosion, flares addition, shockwave, trails, flash lines, embers, refining, rendering, and compositing. Please stay with me, it's gonna be worth it. Let's jump right into part one. Okay, let's control click on the sphere here. And let's see. <clears throat> I changed the uh, background display to be dark. I can leave that light for now, but I will change it later. Now I'm going to call this main SRC, which is main source. I'm going to leave everything here at default except for rows and columns. I'm going to change that to 50 to give it a little bit of resolution. And then I'm going to create a normal. And I'll change this to point normal. And I will create a point wrangle. And I will call this density, which is set density not that okay density and I will create a parameter f at density equals 1 just to initialize and then I will create a point bop and I will say noise up density and let's dive inside and I will create an anti-alias noise connect the position to position and the noise output to CD so you should see that and I'm also gonna create a bind export and I'm gonna say export density and connect the noise to here. I want a little bit uh, more frequency, so I'm gonna change this to two. At default and with a little bit higher frequency, but I do not want any negative values. So, so let's check what the density values are. It's 0 0.26 to minus 0.4. Four. So I'm going to put in fit range in here and connect this to CD now. And 
and we said minus 0 0.4 to 0.26 okay that looks good I'm gonna increase the amplitude to maybe 4 okay that looks good uh, where is it there you go 0 to 1 okay good I'm gonna come back out I'm gonna clip this so we only have the top half of the sphere and then I'm gonna use another point wrangle and I'm gonna initialize the velocity v at v equals v at n so you've got velocity now if you click on this i you have v come up here and you can click on v right here and it'll show up and this is a new feature in 18 and it's fantastic and you can just go back and click on that again it'll disappear so i'm going to change this to set velocity okay and i'm going to create a pop net now which is pop network and i'm going to go in let's look at the source now i want the emission attribute to be density the one we set earlier and i want to check this scale point count by area i'm going to change this to 0.1 so you get you know some amount of points right there uh, so you know I'm gonna just go back in a main source and I think I want to change the offset here yeah that looks uh, pretty cool while I'm at it I'm just gonna set up a camera right here a temporary camera just to get back and forth to this position okay let's dive back into main source and the pop net here so that's looking good and let's go into birth tab and I want this to be zero because this doesn't have any impact I want this to be emitted only at frame number three I want a constant uh, birth rate to be at 50,000 I want more more points really and I don't want too much 100 life expectancy is way too much and um, by the way I changed the end to 120 okay it was originally 240 I don't want 240 and I'm gonna change the variance to 0 0.2 so in total the life expectancy will be from 0.1 to 0.3 all right let's go to attributes and the initial velocity inherent velocity um, I'm gonna change this to eight let's see how that looks okay yeah that's looking good I think it's actually too close let me move back a little yeah that's looking good and I'm gonna put in a pop drag here I'm gonna leave everything at default so yeah so it's it's brought it down um, a lot more okay so that's what that is and see that density that we created earlier so this is why you see some some parts don't emit any particles and that's important okay all right I'm gonna create a gravity force here and I'm gonna use the shelf tool to create a ground plane all right so we've got this now there you go but outside I only want to bring the pop object okay so I'm gonna say pop asterisk and it'll only bring the pop object I don't want the ground plane okay now let's go back out and let's keep it at six. Oh, let me uncheck the display flag for a ground plane object I don't want that and I'm just gonna organize this a little bit okay good so I'm gonna cl click on fireball and it'll do its magic and it's created a pyro import node it created a pyro sim for us okay if you go inside the source again I'll see the create fuel I mean all these nodes were created by it I'm gonna delete this render node because we don't need that so 
let's look at the create fuel. Okay, everything looks good, but I just want the particle separation to be a little lower than that. I'm just going to divide this by two. So it is 0.07. I guess that that'll work fine. Let's move on to the noise right now. I'm going to leave these as they are. Uh, apart from the element size, again, I'll divide this by two. Want uh, smaller element size. Now, if you click on this icon here, let me just enable this. And if you click this thing here, it'll show up your noise pattern. And if I were to run this, yeah, it shows your noise pattern. And again, this is a new feature in 18. So if you don't want to see it anymore, you just click on that again. It'll disappear. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's have a look at rasterize. Um, I think everything is good here. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Let's jump into Pyrosource and let's run this and see what we get. Okay. So we got something. Okay. So let's start adjusting this here. Let's look at the uh, pyro itself. I want to close the boundaries first of all. I don't want anything in the negative y direction and I know this is not currently sitting on the ground plane so I'm going to copy the uh, y size and paste it here and divide it by two so it sits on the ground plane. And if I go into resize container Go into Max Bounds tab and Enforce Boundaries again in the negative Y direction. So, and padding, we want to change this to 1 because I know that this is going to be a high velocity explosion. So, might as well change it to 1 right now. Might as well. Okay, now let's look at the source. As you can see, this is animated, this fuel, and the temperature is not. What I want is the temperature to behave exactly the same way as the fuel. Okay, so I'm going to paste rod of references here. So it'll be the same as the fuel. So let's have a look at what, how it behaves, right? So it's just a, yeah, it's just a little wisp right now. Okay, no big deal. But I want to change this. All right. I held shift and middle click and it comes up with this. Press F and G to lay it out like that. So currently frame number one has got a value of one. Frame number five, it's got a value of 1.85 and then it dies at frame number 10. I don't want to do that. I want, this is a 24 frames per second setup. So I want frame number 24 I want it to die, okay? Um, maybe not die at all, actually. Um, okay, let, let it, let's leave it at die at 24. And I want this at 12, but I want it to go to five. Again, I'll press F and G again. So I want it to be five at the start, all the way till 12 and then drop down, okay? All right, good. Let's play this now. Okay, that looks better, but it does not look like a fireball anymore. Something's uh, strange about it. Okay, this is where this operation comes into play. This is a very important parameter. So when you add fuel, it constantly adds to the simulation. That's why you see that. Okay. I want to change this to copy. I want to leave the temperature at the add and I want to change the vector operation to uh, sorry, velocity operation to none because I don't want any velocity. We will add that later. But I want to add temperature. I want to copy fuel, which means that it'll only copy what's coming in. It'll scale it by this much and that's it. It won't add to it. Okay? So there. It's gone back to how it originally was. It's just like a wisp. Let's go into Pyrosolver 1 and start changing these. 
temperature diffusion is 0.08. I'm a little surprised by this, but um, temperature diffusion is the amount of blur on temperature. I don't want it too low like that. I want to change it to 1.5. And cooling rate, I usually leave it at 50%, which is 0.5. Um, I want the buoyancy left to be 5. Okay. Well, let's move on to combustion tab right now. Ignition temperature, I want it minus 1 because I want to ignite everything instantly. And burn rate, 0.99. In fact, I'll leave it at 0.9 and I will show you the difference shortly. I'm going to change the inefficiency to 0.1. Um, inefficiency is how much of fuel is not burned and it will continue to raise your explosion up okay if the more you have it the more it doesn't burn and then it'll just keep going up this gas released here is currently animated I don't want that I'm going to delete the channels and I'm gonna leave it at 100 we're gonna change this shortly but I want to run this through right now and show you so that's how it looks like right now okay which is okay I guess but not very good so burn rate I'm gonna change it to 0 0.99 uh, you see the difference obviously I raised the burn rate to 0.99 and it's just gone like that that's not very good it's like a balloon right now that's because of the gas released I'm gonna pull this down to 10 now it's back to the wisp all right that's good let's move on to the flames tab I'm gonna leave everything at default here and smoke is the same and gas uh, yeah it's the same I'm gonna leave it on leave them all at the same but fuel I want to advect fuel and I will change this to 1 it was originally at 0.05 and now let's run that Okay, it's got a little bit more strength than previously, which is good. Okay, all right. Uh, I want to actually go in advanced and check OpenCL because I have a good GPU, so why not use it? While I'm here, I might as well go to rest field and enable rest and go into advection, advection type to BFECC and velocity advection type to BFECC. Now this is just an algorithm that advects the fields. Let's go back into shape. I want to enable oops I want to enable everything here but I don't want 0.1 dissipation. I want very less dissipation. Okay all of these are fine for now. We're gonna adjust them later on. Okay. So let's have a look at how that looks. Yeah, that looks uh, okay. I mean, it's not okay, but something. Right, that's part one done, okay? So we're going to move on to part two now, which is flares.